G'day everyone and welcome to my art channel Brushes with Beck. In today's video I'm going to be using these Prismacolor Premier Colour Pencils. Now I have a very old set of Prismacolor Pencils. This is the range of 24 colours and I'm going to be using them to complete a little drawing of a rainbow lorikeet. So today I am using Strathmore Toned Blue Mixed Media Paper. I'm just going to work through and get this piece done. So if this um, drawing looks familiar. It's because I actually used the same reference photo a um, little while back for just a head and shoulders sort of drawing of a rainbow lorikeet on Cancer Matons paper with I think I think I used my polychromos for that or mostly my polychromos and you can see that video. I'm going to link that up in the cards above. It's quite different because um, I had a bit more detail because it was slightly larger. I had the option to add more detail and different pencils, so slightly different technique as well as the different paper. So for this, the Strathmore Toned Blue is a smooth paper, but it has enough texture to grip the pencil. And I like using uh, Prismacolors on this because their Prismacolor colors are very bold. They are very strong colors. You don't have to press very hard to get a lot of strength in the color, which is a fantastic thing about them. Now they are lovely pencils, they're something that a lot of people recommend for colour pencil drawings, but they do have their downfalls, and one of those is, in my opinion, they break way, way, way too often. So I'm constantly having troubles, not only when sharpening them they break, but also when I'm using them and not even applying very much pressure they break. So despite the fact that I've never really used these pencils a great deal, I've used them here and there sparingly for small things, but I've never used them for great lengths of time or on many, many uh, drawings. Um, despite all that, um, a lot of the pencils are very short because when I have used them, I'm constantly sharpening and when I'm sharpening, they're breaking and I have to keep sharpening more. So I find them a real, pain in the neck to use in that regard and so I won't be buying them again probably once these have run out but they are a lovely pencil to use. Now the thing I like about them is that they blend so nicely. You can just layer over those colors over the top of each other very gently and then use another color to blend them out and it works really really nice. You get a really smooth result and it just looks lovely. I feel like the blending with these is pretty effortless um, then again, of course, they are prone to wax bloom because they are a wax-based pencil. So that made it quite challenging when filming. As usual with pencils, pencils can be quite reflective and shiny. And it's hard for me to judge with my lighting on my um, video if I've got my lights in exactly the right spot to prevent that glare from happening off the color pencil. So as I'm doing this section of the wing here, it's actually a little bit muted because of the glare from my lights. But once I finish this wing, I've looked at it again in the back of the camera, I've seen that glare and I've moved the lights so you can see it's not as glary. But if you, if you hit any part of this piece, if you look at it from a certain angle, you can see quite a bit of the wax bloom build up. But overall, like I said, these pencils, despite their challenges, are really nice to use and my goal for this piece was to obviously not do something very detailed because a I don't have the room on a small piece of paper like this and b I don't like these pencils for detail because they break too easily I can't get a very fine point most of the time and if I do get a fine point it just breaks off soon after so for this piece I'm looking more for a blended piece nice strong values of light and dark and just getting those really bright pops of color and just blending those colors together really nicely. So it's working out really, really well. So if you are enjoying this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up, comment down below and subscribe to my channel so that you can catch all of my latest content. Now moving on to the breast area of the bird and this area was probably the most fun. It was just, it came together really easily. It was very relaxing to do. I just love those little uh, variations and color changes with that sort of scalloping, scalloping on the feathers and really getting in that dark red instead of a bright red to emphasize that that area is in shadow really really helped with this piece and so as you can see and you probably see it in the f f sped up there that my pencil just keeps breaking and I had this problem with many colors. Now, as I said, I have had these pencils a long time, so it's possible they break 
more than regular Prismacolors do, but even when I first had these, I always had problems with sharpening and not getting my pencils to break. So in terms of quality of the build, not my favorite pencil, but as I said, they are lovely and smooth to work with. And they go down really nice on this paper. So I have no problem um, getting the strong colors over the top of this toned paper at all with these pencils. So just going in with my blending, I tend to pick, I pick out a color that's going to be my main color tone, which is sort of that yellowy green in this area. And then I've gone in with my darker greens lightly and my pale greens in that area. And then I use my main green color to blend those together to get the result that I want in the end. So I'm not going in with my primary green that I want to use straight away. I'm using the other greens, then using my primary green to blend that out and get it all looking sort of cohesive. So the head is definitely the hardest part on this bird. Um, using a smooth paper for a head and texture like this, feathers and texture like this is quite challenging, but the Prismacolors, I decided to um, do a very soft layer of the darker blue, map in my pale areas and then go around those with my darker blue again. And in the end it came together okay, but it's very, very challenging to work in these small areas without a fine point on your pencil. I didn't think I'd be able to lay over the bright colors completely over the darks because this isn't a textured paper. You'd need more of a paper texture to be able to completely lay over a bright over a dark. And so I worked around all those fine little bright areas and got my little darks in there and then blended out the whole thing very, very lightly. I didn't use much pressure with a light blue just to sort of smooth it out a little bit and make it look more sleek and shiny like it did in my reference photo. So not much to go at this point and working in the eye around there was extremely challenging and the didn't come out how I wanted because my black was too blunt, but I still got there in the end. And there's there's no greys in this 24 set of Prismacolors, so you've sort of got to work with what you've got and make greys and pale tones and make it all work out. So this lovely beak is nice and bold and shiny, and I feel like that's almost the best way to use Prismas is with those really vivid, bold colors rather than sort of muted tones and that sort of thing. So last little bit is the feet and I will admit I cheated again. I left the feet till last and then I didn't draw them on anything. So at this point I was sort of just, and the feet especially, there's a lot of detail on feet which again I couldn't get it in because I couldn't get sharp enough points on my pencils. So I just gave suggestions of texture on there. But as you can see that's the finished piece. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. It was nice to use a different pencil than normal using these Prismacolor Premiers. As you can see the colors are really bold and vibrant and that's one great thing about them. So if you enjoyed this video once again please give it a thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you again next week for another video. Stay creative!